Well, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. I guess I uh, want to thank everybody for being on Zoom today and uh, also those that watch the YouTube video. We're here at the house and uh, we don't, you know, we, we called off our meeting here at the house and uh, we just decided to do it all on Zoom and, uh, and you know, by the video and all. And I just want to thank everybody for being part of it today. I thank you for your patience with us and, uh, and uh, you know, studying with us today. So before we get started, I guess we'll, you know, go ahead and blow the shofar and we'll call our meeting to assembly. Mm, okay. Wow. All right. I hope everybody I hope everybody heard that. Uh I heard. Okay, good. All right. I don't know. I'm having trouble with my microphone picking it up a lot of times. And it, I've noticed in the recordings it doesn't come across in the recording. But anyway, we'll I'll try to work on that. I don't know if it's a setting that I have on the mic or what, but uh Anyway, we'll try to figure it out. All right, well, let's go to Yahuwah in prayer, and we'll start our study. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you do and the many blessings that you give us. And Father, we ask that you give us wisdom in your word today. Father, help us to understand, to walk in what we learn. Help us to, to know what, the, what we're reading, what it actually means, and that would be your wisdom. And Father, we'll give you the praise and the glory for all that. And Father, we ask that you be with each and every one of us here today. Uh, today being the eighth great day, we thank you for the Moedim. We thank you for all that you that you do and, and working in our lives, helping us to become more like you call us to be. And we ask that you continue to, to work in our hearts and our lives and helping us to be what we need to be. And Father, again, we'll give you all the praise and the glory for it's in Yahushua's name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, today we just finished up uh, Sukkot and now we're in the eighth great day or the eighth day. Uh, you know, from a, from the, the prophetic or the spiritual side of, you know, where we are, uh, we uh, are, uh, you know, looking at the, you know, the Feast of Trumpets that we went through a couple of weeks ago, you know, the first day of the seventh biblical month, that's the, the day that, you know, blowing of the trumpets and making noise, that's the announcement of uh, the Messiah coming to take his bride. Then on the day of atonement would be the day that we need to be clean. And you start being clean on the evening before, because you know that if you're, if you're uh, unclean, you become clean at evening. Well, if you become, if you know, if you become clean at evening, then the following day that you should be clean. And therefore it'd be like, you know, if you're going to the, if you're planning on going to the wedding, you've got to be clean, especially if you're chosen to be one of the you know, the bride, then, uh, you know, you need to be clean on the wedding day, which is the day of atonement. And then the uh, Sukkot is the honeymoon phase. That would be, you know, the the honeymoon with the Messiah after he comes back and takes his bride. And then the eighth great day represents eternity with Yahuwah, being with Yahuwah. So uh, today we're observing the eighth great day or the eighth day. And uh, so that is... Uh, uh, you know, in, in the, like I said, the prophetic side or the spiritual side is the, we're preparing. It's like a, a shadow, if you will, of, you know, being with Yahuwah for the rest of eternity. And so anyway, that's the, you know, the significance of the feast days and all the feast days have, you know, deeper meanings. And a lot of people, you know, are, I know in Christianity, I was never taught anything about you know, the feast days. In fact, we never even touched on the feast days. It was all the, you know, the pagan holidays. And uh, so, you know, and, and I, I, I'm i kind of debating on whether to go through any of the pagan days, but I think people need to know. So uh, I, I'm going to chase a rabbit right here right quick because the, the, the pagan days, they're, it's not just they're not of Yahuwah. It's just that they're extremely evil. Now, we have Halloween coming up here pretty quick. Well, Halloween to me is nothing compared to the evilness of Christmas and Easter. If you look at Christmas and Easter, it go, the pagan practices go back way before the Messiah. I mean, hundreds of years you know, before Messiah got here. Uh, on Easter, let's just, well, I'll just show you, kind of go through it right quick. Easter, they would have a sunrise service. 
and then they would watch the sun come up because they worship the sun. And then sometime during that day, they would have an orgy. Well, in that orgy, everything was okay. Uh, anybody with anybody, everybody with everybody. And so uh, then they would have uh, a sacrifice. They would sacrifice babies. So uh, nine months later, after the orgy takes place, all the children that were conceived during that Easter celebration would be born at Christmas, at the Christmas holidays. Okay, so when you when you observe Christmas, then what you're doing is you're putting Yahusha, the Messiah, you're putting his birth at that same time, making him a pagan sacrifice. Okay, so anyway, on Christmas, all those babies would be born or right there at that Christmas, at the winter solstice time, they would be born. Well, all of them that were born at that time were the ones, the babies that were going to be sacrificed the following Easter. So they would, the following Easter, they would all show up, you know, with their babies that were born at the winter solstice and they would have their sunrise service and worship the sun as it comes up. Then they would have another orgy. And then all, you know, later that afternoon, they would sacrifice the babies and all the blood from the babies that were sacrificed, the ones that were born at the previous Christmas, they would be, you know, three months old or four months old. Then uh, their blood, they would take eggs and they would dip eggs in that blood and they would take those eggs out and they would hide them for the other kids to find. And so the way that, you know, the way that they, you know, they chose the ones to be sacrificed or the ones that were conceived during the previous Easter. And so anyway, the Easter and, and Christmas holidays to me are extremely evil. People still do the same kind of thing. You know, they still have the, the Easter egg hunts and they still have the sunrise service. They still do all the stuff for the most part. The, the, uh, the orgy is even committed, believe it or not, because they're worshiping another God. They're worshiping another Elohim, which is uh, adultery, okay? So, I mean, it's it, if you look at it from a spiritual nature, it's exactly the same thing. On Christmas, uh, Jeremiah tells you, don't go and nail your, you know, get cut out. Don't, don't go out in the woods and cut down an evergreen tree, bring it in the house, nail it to the floor, deck it with gold and silver. And, you know, and it goes on, it, it says, you know, also, you don't want to, you don't worship Yahuwah in the manner that the pagans worship their Elohims. Well, I mean, it tells you very specifically, don't do these things. You know, if Christmas, I, if all it was was Santa Claus and presents, I wouldn't have a problem with it. People go out and do it all they want to. That doesn't matter. But the fact of the matter is it's so evil that, I mean, it's just, it's it, it in itself is, is extremely evil because the, the babies that are that are born during that time or the sacrifice babies that's going to be sacrificed next Easter. Anyway, I don't, you know, I probably said too much. And, you know, I don't know, YouTube may kick me off. I don't know. And I really, you know, I, uh, I guess if I, if I get a warning, I get a warning or whatever. I don't know. But anyway, okay, so let's go on into our study today. And we'll be in Sirach. We're going to continue on in the book of Sirach. And uh, so uh, uh, let's see if I can. Okay, we're in Sirach 22. A slothful man is compared to a filthy stone, and everyone who hisses him hisses him out to his disgrace. A slothful man is compared to a filth to the filth of a dunghill, and every man that taketh it up will shake his hand. So I mean, you know, the, the dung hill is considered unclean and filthy and and if you're if you know if you're dealing with a slothful man well then you know you're going to get some of it on you is what it sounds like okay and an uh, evil natured man is the dishonor to his father he begat him and a foolish daughter is born to his loss so you know i mean having you know evil natured you know children is uh is tough for parents and i you know parents that that have you know we have kids that that aren't obedient and it is it's very hard we want our kids to you know to be obedient to you a wise daughter shall bring in a, an inheritance to her husband but she that liveth dishonestly is her father's heaviness she that is bold dishonoreth both her father and her husband but they both shall despise her. 
a tale out of season is as music in mourning, but stripes and, and correction of wisdom are never out of time. So, you know, the going to correction and wisdom, you know, when we step out of line, when we do things that aren't, we aren't supposed to do, if you are one of Yahuwah's, if you are, you know, considered uh, in covenant, if you are in covenant with Yahuwah, he's going to correct us. The Holy Spirit is going to convict you, correct you, and let you know that you have stepped out of line, that you've said something or done something that you hadn't done. That's the benefit of the uh, the Holy Spirit. And in, in, in speaking at it in, in terms of covenant, the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant is the fact that if you read the old covenant, it, if you read the book of Deuteronomy, you're going to read the, that that the covenant. If you read in the book of Deuteronomy, it says that you or me, it says that you, it's Yahuwah speaking to the people, you shall, you know, uh, take this, this covenant and you shall apply it to your heart, to your life, that you shall speak, you know, teach it to your children, that you shall talk about it, you know, when you're out walking, when you lie down, when you rise up. And it's all about you or me doing everything to keep in covenant. Well, that's the old covenant. The new covenant is exactly the same way. It's exactly the same words with the exception that Yahuwah is taking charge of us being in covenant by giving us the Holy Spirit. When he gave us the Holy Spirit, now when we step out of line, then we know that, that Yahuwah has, he has given us that uh, benefit of the Holy Spirit to correct us so that we will know to stop doing it. So Yahuwah has actually taken charge of us being in covenant. The, and that's, so the reason that the old covenant was, you know, the reason that the old covenant failed is because of the people. The people, just like the people that were led out of the, out of Egypt, they didn't want to follow Yahuwah. You know, they kept complaining and, and, you know, and, and telling Moses that, you know, why did you bring us out just to die? You know, so they didn't want to be there. They kept looking back, wanting to go back to Egypt. Well, the fact is that now we have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will correct us. The Holy Spirit will let us know. That's the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. Okay. So uh, verse six it says, a tale out of season is as music in mourning, but stripes and correction of wisdom are never out of time. Uh, Whoso teacheth a fool is as one that glueth a potsherd together. And as he that walketh one from a, or waketh from a sound sleep. So, you know, that, uh, uh, if you glue a, you know, if you glue a pot together, you know, it might be okay for some things, but it, it's, it's going to be, uh, lacking a lot. It's not going to stay together long. Okay. And, uh, and, and it also it's, it talks about being woken from a sound sleep, you know, that we're, I guess, not, uh, not a hundred percent there when we do. Okay. He that telleth a tale to a fool speaketh to one in a slumber. Uh, when he hath told his tale, he will say, what is the matter? Okay. If children live honestly and have wherewithal, they shall cover the baseness of their parents. But children being haughty through disdain and want of nature do stain the nobility of their kindred. So, you know, children have a way of, uh, you know, help, you know, helping us or they can really be a hinder to us. And, you know, we, cause the thing about it, you know, we want our children to follow in Yahuwah's footsteps. You know, we want, we want our children to be obedient to Yahuwah. And when they're not, it's really tough because, you know, our children are really close to us and, you know, they're, they're, they're from our bodies and, you know, we, we want them to be in, you know, right standing with Yahuwah. But, and it's very hard, you know, it's very hard for us that have children. Uh, verse 11, weep for the dead, for he hath lost the light and weep for the fool, for he wanteth or doesn't have understanding. Make little weeping for the dead for he is at rest, but the life of the fool is worse than death. So we know that the fool, if you look at the biblical definition of the word fool, and I know we go through this a lot, but it's the 
if you look at the biblical definition, it is one that says there is no Elohim or one that despises reproof and correction. So it, the fool is the disobedient. And so when you look at the disobedient, you know, being disobedient is worse than death. And that's what this is saying. So, you know, it's, it's being disobedient to Yahuwah is, you know, I mean, that's the worst thing that we can do. Verse 12, it says, seven days do men mourn for him that is dead. But for a fool and a and an unrighteous man all the days of his life. So, you know, you mourn for people that have died, but for people that are disobedient, we mourn every day. You know, we, we if you watch TV, if you watch, you know, news, if you watch just the way things are going, I mean, just watch a TV show nowadays. And it's all about things that are completely against Yahuwah. And, you know, if you, if you are one of Yahuwah's, that's going to affect you. You know, you're going to, you're not going to like it. And, you know, one of the things, and I think it speaks in, in the book of John, I can't tell you exactly where it is. I know I've read it, but it says, if you love this world, if you love what's going on in this world, then you're not of Yahuwah. And so, you know, this world is completely disobedient toward Yahuwah. And, you know, we mourn, we see it. And, and it's, and it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's very sad to watch all the stuff that's going on. Verse 13. Talk not much to a fool, and go not to him that hath no understanding. Okay, the understanding there, the biblical understand, the biblical, biblical uh, meaning of understanding is to walk in it, is to do what it's to basically shema to hear and obey. Okay, beware of him, lest you have trouble, and you shall never be defiled with his fooleries. Depart from him, and thou shalt find rest, and never be disquieted with madness. So, you know, the thing about, you know, talking to a fool or dealing with a fool is that it has a tendency to rub off on, on you. So, you know, you might just, you might talk to them, but don't spend a lot of time with them. Okay. Okay. Verse 14, it says, what is heavier than lead and what is uh, the name thereof, but a fool sand and salt. And a mass of iron is easier to bear than a man without understanding. A man without understanding. A man that's not walking in the Torah, not walking in the truth. As timber girt and bound together in a building cannot be loosed with shaking, so is the heart uh, that is uh, that is established by adverse advised counsel shall fear at no time a heart settled upon a thought of understanding is a fair uh pla plastering okay on the wall okay it's a plastering on the wall of a gallery a heart settled upon a thought of understanding is as a fair plastering on a wall of a gallery okay Pales set on a high place will never stand against the wind. So a fearful heart in the imagination of a fool cannot stand against any fear. So the thing that we need to be aware of is the fear of Yahuwah, I think is what this is talking about. In fact, I'm pretty sure. So we need to fear Yahuwah. The heart, let's see, pales set on a high place will never stand against the wind. So if you place pales up on a high place, the wind is going to blow them. The wind is like the spirit. The spirit, wind and spirit are the same thing in, in Hebrew. The wind, you know, it's ruach. And it says, so a fearful heart in the imagination of a fool cannot stand against any fear. So, you know, the, the fear that we need to have is the fear against Yahuwah or the fear of Yahuwah. And a fool's heart cannot stand against that. Okay. He that pricketh the eye will make tears fall. And he that pricketh the heart maketh it show her knowledge. Whoso casteth a stone at the birds uh, frayeth them away. And he that upbraideth his friend breaketh friendship. So the, the word upbraid there would be to criticize or to, uh, uh, well, it, to, well, to criticize and to uh, uh, say something that, you know, that 
that's intended to uh, injure, basically. Okay. <clears throat> Though thou drawest a sword at thy friend, yet despair not, for there may be a returning to favor. Okay, now this is one that there's a little to me, you know, now all of them may have hidden little hidden messages in them, but this one surely does. It says, though thou drawest a sword at thy friend, yet despair not. Okay, so don't despair if you draw a sword at your friend, for there may be a returning to favor. In other words, you may get him to turn back to where he's supposed to be. The sword represents the word, the word of Yahuwah. We know that the word of Yahuwah is, uh, you know, it's, it's referred to as the sword. And it's a double-edged sword. So if you if you draw the sword at a friend, if you, in other words, if you if you correct a friend with the word of Yahuwah, don't despair, and because you might be able to get him to return. Okay. If thou hast opened thy mouth against a friend, fear not, for there may be a reconciliation, except for upbraiding or pride or disclosing of secrets or a treacherous wound. For these things, uh, every friend will depart. So here's the thing that we need to keep in mind. If you open your mouth against a friend, in other words, if you talk to a friend, and, and when I say friend, I'm talking about a brother that's in covenant. Now, somebody that's not in covenant, this doesn't apply. Okay, this is someone that is in covenant with us. So if you open your mouth against someone that's in covenant, there may be a reconciliation, okay? But you don't want to upbraid. In other words, you don't want to criticize. You don't want to say something that is hurtful. You don't want to do it from a prideful situation or if you disclose secrets, things that were told to you in confidence or a treacherous wound. In other words, you know, things that, but, you know, th this is all the, the kingdom of the world stuff that you don't want to do. For these things, every friend will depart. So if you if you do it from it, it, it's all if you do it out of love, then you may you may get reconciliation. If you do it out of you know pride or you know trying to uh, uh, get one over on him, you know, or up you know uh, show that you're smarter in in Torah or whatever, How, you know, if you do it from a prideful you know situation, then you will lose that friend. Okay. Verse 23, be faithful to thy neighbor in his poverty, and thou may rejoice in his prosperity. Abide steadfast unto him in time of his trouble, that thou mayest be heir with him in his heritage. For a mean estate is not always to be uh, con contemned, nor the rich that is foolish to be had in admiration as the vapor of smoke of a furnace goeth before a fire so reviling before blood so i mean you it's basically saying that you know what i get out of this is that you know you don't want to uh, you when you have a friend or you have a neighbor somebody that's considered you know a friend in covenant with you you know you, you be faithful to that neighbor and you rejoice in his prosperity. And, but, you know, but you also, you be with him in his trouble. And, uh, you know, because being with someone in their trouble, you know, it could bring them, it, it, it can help them. It can bring them, uh, you know, it says, bring him with his heritage. And uh, anyway, so if you, the, the verse 24 it says the vapor of smoke of a furnace goeth before a fire. So if you have issues with somebody, you know, and you want to, you know, stand toe to toe and fight them basically, well, you know, it, you'll see this, it, the, the fire that it's talking about is the anger mate basically that you have towards someone. And that's going to be before you draw blood. So, you know, uh, you need to be aware, just be, you know, we need to control our, emotions we need to be careful with especially with people that are in covenant and people that uh, that we consider friend or family and when i'm speaking family i'm speaking those that are in covenant with yahuwah i will not be ashamed to defend a friend neither will i hide myself from him 
And if any evil happen unto me by him, everyone that heareth it will beware of him. Who shall set a watch before my mouth and a seal of wisdom upon my lips, that I may fall not suddenly by them, and that my tongue destroy, destroy me not? Okay, who is going to set a watch over your mouth and a seal of wisdom upon your lips? Well, it's the Holy Spirit. Okay, and that I fall not suddenly by them. Okay, so the, the Holy Spirit is going to keep us. It's going to, he's going to watch our, he's going to, if we start to say something with our mouth or, you know, the wisdom given to us, you know, who's going to give us the wisdom on our lips? It, it, well, it's, it's Yahua. It's through his Holy Spirit. And that, uh, so, and what it does is the Holy Spirit will keep your tongue from destroying you. Okay, so, you know, knowing that, that, these facts, we need to be sensitive what the Holy Spirit is telling us. I, I struggle with it. I know everybody that's in covenant struggles with it because we get upset with different people and we get upset at situations and we want to lash out. But at the same time, we need to be careful. We need to make sure that we don't let our mouth destroy us because it's just like, I mean, it's, if you read the book of James, it's pretty clear that, uh, you know, that if you, you know, allow yourself you can, you know, your, your, your tongue can speak, uh, curses and also can speak blessings, but the mixture of the two, you know, it, it, it comes out as, you know, it's, it's anytime that you're speaking curses, then it's going to overcrowd your blessings. So, you know, it, it talks about mixing, you know, sweet water and bitter water. It's always going to be bitter. So we need to make sure that our mouth, our tongue, we stay as clean as possible. Okay. <clears> the <throat> rock 23 verse one. O Yahuwah, father and governor of my whole life, leave me not to their counsel and let me not fall by them. Okay. I want to just bring this one thing up. It says, uh, O Yahuwah, father and governor. Okay. So he not only is our father, but from a government standpoint, he is our government leader. Okay. So let him be the government leader. And, you know, and I, you know, I, I'm not going to tell all of y'all, I'm not going to tell you not to vote. I know you need to do what you think you need to do, but let you who my, my advice is to let you take care of the big stuff. And we just need to take care of our own life. Okay. And let him be the governor of our life. And so, you know, if you read Romans, the, the whole, chapter of Romans 13, it talks about, you know, he is going to choose our leaders anyway. So, you know, why do we need to worry about the leaders of the world, the leaders of the country or the, you know, the, the city or the, you know, whatever, you know, let him worry about those big things. And, you know, we need to worry about taking care of ourselves. Okay. Who will set scourges over my thoughts and the discipline of wisdom over my heart that they may spare me not for my ignorances? And it will pass not by my sins. So, you know, who sets scourges over my thoughts and the discipline of wisdom over my heart? It's the Holy Spirit. So allowing the Holy Spirit to, you know, to, to set, you know, to, to, to govern over our thoughts and the discipline of wisdom over our own hearts. It is Yahuwah. It is the Holy Spirit that's going to do that. Okay. Least my ignorances increase and my sins abound to my destruction. And I fall before my adversaries, and my enemies rejoice over me, whose hope is far from thy mercy. So, you know, we need to, you know, understand that it's only through the mercy of Yahuwah that we can survive any of our own, our sins, our ignorances. And, you know, we're, we're, we are our own worst enemy. You know, we, we are, we are set to destroy ourselves and, you know, only by the mercy of Yahuwah can we be saved. Okay. Verse four, it says, Oh, Yahuwah, father and Elohim of my life, give me not a proud look and turn away from thy servants, always a haughty mind. So, you know, asking Yahuwah to take away any proudness that we have, any proud look, or, you know, any haughty, uh, uh, you know, look that we may have or a haughty mind. You know, if you read uh, Proverbs chapter six, 
there's six things or seven things that Yahuwah hates. And one is a proud look and the, you know, the shedding of innocent blood and, and, you know, one that sows discord among the brethren. And it, I, I've just named a few, but the proud look is, is one that, uh, that Yahuwah actually hates. And so we need to make sure that, you know, we ask him to not let us do that. Verse five, turn away from me, vain hopes and concupiscence, and thou shalt hold him up that is uh, desirous always to serve thee. Okay, turn away from me any vain hopes. Okay, so we want to we we want to ask you who to take us to turn us away from anything that's vain. You know, if you read all the book of Ecclesiastes, you know the uh, Solomon says that all just about everything we do is vanity or vain. And, you know, and, and it's, it's stuff that we, that we think is important, but it's really not. And so the, you know, we want to, we want Yahuwah to take those, that vanity, take those things that are vain, take them away from us. And, you know, he won't, and give us the desires that, uh, you know, that he wants. Okay. Verse six, let not the, the, the greediness, of the belly, nor lust of the flesh, take hold of me, and give not over me, my servant, into an impudent mind. So you know we want to, uh, we want Yahuwah to, to to take away our greediness and our lust, the the greediness of our belly and the lust of our flesh. Because again, you know, and I talk about I talk about this a lot, but and I and I don't like you know beating things to death, but it's something that I feel is very important. Is the biggest devil that any of us are going to face is going to be our own flesh. Well, helping asking Yahuwah to help take away that you know a lot of the 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 things that are that are keeping us focused on our flesh, helping you you know asking Yahuwah to take that away can actually help us a lot. I mean, so we need to make sure that we ask Yahuwah to help us with our flesh because you know if you read Paul's ministry if you read the, you know, all of Paul's writings, he, his whole ministry is circled around, you know, denying your own flesh or crucifying your flesh. And so Paul understood that our biggest adversary, our biggest, you know, uh, our biggest devil is our own flesh. Verse seven, hear, O ye children, and discipline of the mouth that he keepeth it shall never be taken from his lips. So discipline of our own mouth is vitally important because again, we can bless and we can curse with our mouth, with our tongue. And we need to be careful what we say to people. We need to be very careful because the whole idea is to, to try to draw people in to Yahuwah. Well, if you're, you know, if you're uh, an adversary to them, or if, you know, if you come against them, you know, then how are you going to draw them in? So, you know, you, we have opportunities every day to argue with people, but at the same time, if they want to argue, then it's not very likely that you're going to draw them in. So in an arguing situation, then you need to pretty much be quiet. And uh, now this is just my thinking, because I've seen it go both ways. I've seen it where, you know, in an argument situation, people will, you know, they will argue and they will walk away thinking that they have won the argument because they you know, because they understood understood the scripture a little bit better, or they knew the scripture a little bit better than who they were arguing with. But the fact is that they didn't win because they didn't draw the people in. Now, you know, if you want to draw the people in, you have to be basically like what the scripture says. You have to be uh, as, uh, uh, huh? Yeah, you have to be as wise as a serpent, yet gentle as a dove. And so to be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove Meaning that, you know, if you go against somebody and, you know, you want to argue with them, you know, you're not being gentle as a dove, you know, you're being, you know, you're just not going to, you're not going to draw people in. You're not going to draw people in by, you know, arguing with them. If you, who is not working on them, then you're not going to be able to get them. You're not going to be able to draw them in. And so, you know, we need to be, you know, we need to be careful with people that aren't in covenant. And uh, now, you know, if, and I'm just saying, if you, uh, you know, get the, the word from Yahuwah that you need to be like the Old Testament prophets, then that's different. But, you know, because, you know, Yahuwah gave Isaiah and Ezekiel and a bunch of them, he gave them things to say, 
that made them very unpopular with the people. And by doing that, you know, they were given a special task to go out and, and be very ad, adversarial against the people. But with since, Yahu, since Yahusha has come, well, you know, one of the things that it, by him coming, then, you know, uh, and, and, and through his ministry, it's, you know, we learn that uh, we have to be, we have to temper the scripture with the, you know, with Messiah, Yahusha in mind. And, you know, he, it, it's, it's more in the, in the area of love. So, you know, the Old Testament prophets, uh, they had a task, but now we've got the Torah. We have the scripture written. We have it in book form that can actually take the place of the Old Testament prophets. People can read, you know, the, what the Old Testament prophets had to go through, what they had to do and their task. And so, you know, read, being able to read all of that and know the Torah, know the scripture, know the Tanakh, then, you know, it, it can take the place of us having to do that. Okay. So anybody that, that actually wants to know Yahuwah, all they got to do is pick up the, the book and read. Okay. Uh, verse eight, it says, the sinner shall be left in his foolishness. Both the evil speaker and the proud shall fall thereby. Accustom not thy mouth to swearing, neither use thyself to the naming of the set apart one. Okay, so accustom your mouth to not, you know, to not to swearing. Neither use thyself to the naming of Yahuwah, the set apart one. For, you know, so let's see. Let's see. It says, if you go to verse eight, it says, the sinner shall be left in his foolishness. So, you know, I guess we have to be careful in how we deal with sinners and people that are considered foolish, those that say that there's no Elohim or those that despise reproof and correction. And so, uh, it, you know, it goes on, it says both the evil speaker and the proud shall fall thereby, you know, they're going to fall by their own disobedience. And so, you know, uh, we need to witness to them, but we got to be careful even doing that. One of the things I know the scripture talks about is those that are, that are like that, that we need to leave them alone. Now, how do you, I, I don't know that it's a, it's, it's a fine line to walk because we want to be obedient to Yahuwah. But the thing that see Yahuwah could be working on somebody that is disobedient. And if we step in, we could actually get in the way. And one of the things, you know, it talks about, you know, it, it, if you read the scripture, it tells you don't even pray for those people. So, you know, it, and, and that's what's tough. So, I mean, when do you pray for people? When do you not pray for people? And that's a good question. And I don't really know. I don't know fully the answer. So, you know, I, my tendency is I don't want anybody to, you know, to go down the wrong path. So, you know, if we pray for those people, I mean, is that getting in the way of Yahuwah? I don't, I don't know. We have, you know, it, it, I, I don't know. I'm going to leave it kind of there because I know there are scripture that talks about us praying for the lost, but then there's also scripture that says, don't, you know, don't pray for them. So there, it's not a, uh, uh, it's, it's not something that is in conflict with each other. It's just, it's in us and our understanding or our interpretation of what it says is where we mess up. Okay. Verse 10, it says, for as a servant that is continually beaten, shall not be without a blue mark so that he that sweareth and nameth Elohim continually shall not be false faultless. We have to be careful using Yahuwah's name. We have to make sure that we use it in a very, uh, you know, in a very respectful and uh, reverent way. Okay. A man that useth much swearing shall be filled with iniquity and the plague shall never depart from his house. If he shall offend, his sin shall be upon him. And if he acknowledge not his sin, he maketh a double offense. And if he swear in vain, he shall not be innocent, but his house shall be full of calamities. There is a word that is clothed about with death. Elohim grant that it be not found in the heritage of Yaakov. 
for all such things shall be far from the righteous and they shall not wallow in their sin. Use not thy mouth to uh, in, interpret swearing, for therein the word of sin. Okay. Remember thy father and thy mother when thou sittest among great men. Be not forgetful before them. And so thou, by thy custom, become a fool and wish that they had not been born and curse the day of thy nativity. <clears throat> Man, huh? Did somebody have something? Okay. A man that is accustomed to uh, uproarious words will never be reformed all the days of his life. Two sorts of men multiply sin, and a third will bring wrath. A hot mind is a burning fire. It will never be quenched till it is consumed. A fornicator in the body of his flesh will never cease till the, he hath kindled a fire. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. He will not leave off till he die. A man that breaketh wedlock says thus in his heart, Who sees me? I am... Uh, compassed about with darkness the walls cover me and nobody seeth me what need i to fear the most high will not remember my sins such a man only feareth the eyes of men and knoweth not that the eyes of yahuwah are ten thousand times brighter than the sun beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts so i mean you know all of that is uh you know, we do things in darkness and then, you know, behind closed doors and we think we're not seen. Well, we are. We're seen by Yahuwah. Okay. Uh, verse 20. He knew all things or ever they were created. So also after they were perfected, he looked upon them all. This man shall be punished in the streets of the city and where he uh, suspecteth not he shall be taken. Thus shall I go also with the wife that leaveth her husband. Or though, thus shall it go also with the wife that leaveth her husband and bringeth in an heir by another. In other words, a woman that brings in another child by the, the relationship. It says, for first she has disobeyed the law of the most high. And secondly, she has trespassed against her own husband. And thirdly, she hath played the whore in adultery and brought children by another man. She shall be brought into the, co the congregation and inquisition shall be made of her children. Her children shall not take root and her branches shall bring forth no fruit. She shall leave her memory to be cursed and her reproach shall not be blotted out. And they that remain shall know that there is nothing better than to fear Yahuwah. And there is nothing sweeter than to take heed into the commandments of Yahuwah. It is a great glory to follow Yahuwah and to be received of him is long life. Okay, so the 27 and 28 there, and they that remain shall know that there is nothing better than to fear Yahuwah. There is nothing better than to fear Yahuwah because if you fear Yahuwah, then you know that he can destroy you. You're going to be doing whatever it takes to try to please Yahuwah. Okay, then it goes on. It says, and that there is nothing sweeter than to take heed unto the commandments of Yahuwah, to follow what Yahuwah wants us to follow. So, you know, I know that when I was growing up, you know, I wanted to please my dad and he was hard to please, but I did what I thought I needed to and, and everything that I could to try to please him. Okay. We want to do that with Yahuwah. So from an earthly standpoint, you know, it is nice to be able to please your earthly parents or your father, but what's greater and even more is to please our heavenly father. Okay. And to please him, you have to be following the Torah. Okay. Then it goes on in 28 is a great glory to follow Yahuwah. And, and to receive of him is long life. The long life that it's talking about is uh, basically the eternal 
you know, the eternal life. To please Yahuwah is to, you know, when we please him, we gain eternal life. Now, uh, you know, I'm not preaching uh, salvation by works, but I am preaching salvation, uh, the works, well, salvation basically through works, I guess, if you want to look at it like that. So if you accept Yahusha as Messiah, you gain salvation. And it goes on that as you learn the Torah, as you learn the law, the, the covenant, you step into that. You start following that covenant. And that as you follow, as you shema, as you hear and obey, then now you become, you, you know, you're, you're, you're gaining in your understanding, which is you walking in it. And by gaining in your understanding, then what that is, is you're showing Yahuwah that you love him. He showed us that he loved him, uh, loved us by him sending his son to die on the cross. And that, that uh, in, you know, if we can't repay the favor, then in the end days, he's going to basically say, depart from me for I never knew you. And how is he going to come to know you is if you follow his Torah. That's the only way he's going to come to know you. Otherwise, he won't know you. If you're not following his Torah, if you're following the other, you know, the pagan holidays, and if you're following all the pagan ways of doing things and the then the worldly ways of doing things, you're operating in the kingdom of the world and not in the kingdom of Yahuwah, he's not going to know you. And, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's just common sense, you know, if you will, but it's also scriptural. So anyway, you need to make sure that you, you know, that you do the best you can at following what he wants and, you know, and doing what he wants, that way he will know you. And keeping of the Sabbath is the mark of Yahuwah. We know that, you know, we talked about that offline earlier about, you know, the uh, Exodus 31, 13. It's the keeping of his Sabbath is uh, the, you know, getting that, that would be getting his mark. And so anyway, uh, I guess we'll go ahead and stop the, the study here and we'll pick back up the Saturday on the Sabbath and uh, we'll be as far as I know right now we'll be continuing on in Sirach but I may be just you know I may be redirected I don't know we'll have to see but uh, right now that's my plan Yahuwah willing so uh, I guess we'll go ahead and stop the study again I want to thank everybody for being on Zoom those that are on uh, uh, you know that watch YouTube video and I just want to thank everybody uh, again See you next Sabbath. You're willing. Thank you very much.